All right, everyone, we start off today talking about several different spirals that are sort of intersecting. So Budweiser and Pride events, because those two are intertwined. And also the Krasensteins. They're digging themselves into a deep hole right now. Their public relations uh, credibility has, has devolved somewhat over the last 48 hours. This is also pertinent to libs of TikTok. Now, there are several links in the description. Uh, one of them is archived. The other ones are tweets. Uh, first, we've got actually Budweiser sales to talk about. The uh, boycott continues to hit them hard. They're, they've hit a new low, actually. Uh, they're down almost 30% for the same week in the prior year. Over, over the prior year, for the same week, their sales have declined by almost a third now. It was already in the 20s, um, and that was bad enough, and enough to get front page news. Now it's approaching 30%. I can't imagine it uh, uh, going up anytime soon. Now, while most people are simply swapping out one woke piss beer for another woke piss beer, like they're drinking Coors or Miller, I guess, or something like that, and while they should either not drink beer because, you know, it's pointless, uh, you know, it's basically piss water, or at least drink uh, like a microbrew made by some local farmer or something so that you're helping your local community or at least like a regional chain, like a long trail ale sort of thing, um, it, despite that, it is funny to see Budweiser really fall flat because... For many, many years, Budweiser was sort of the proverbial beer in the United States, and it really it's fallen off of its pedestal. It's no longer the top seller uh, in any way, shape, or form. Bud Light was, the, I think, the most popular beer in the United States. I don't think that it is when your sales have declined that much. Other uh, companies are now gobbling up that market share very happily and selling people their piss water so they can continue to destroy their livers. So first is just a massive decline in sales. How does Budweiser decide that it's going to handle things going forward? Well, mixed messaging mostly. They haven't come out and apologized to their fans, said, hey, we know we pissed off our largest market demographic with the Dylan Mulvaney thing, the non-apology, more non-apologies, pretending the issue would go away on its own magically, and then releasing a slurry of goofy ads that make no sense. Like, I guess there's something called the Bud Knight, which is some dude dressed up with Budweiser Bud Light colored armor or something like that. Posted that the other day. They're getting ratioed yet again. I wonder why. Uh, it, it, watching them implode is just insane. So they figured they had to do something. So they sponsored a pride parade up in Toronto. The problem being, of course, that it featured uh, naked dudes riding bikes around in front of children. The Krasensteins then weighed in, and they decided to join in on the implosion party. I mean, you've got like you've got three, four different layers of uh, cell phoning here. Libs of TikTok uh, put out a post with regards to the Toronto Pride Parade, saying, "Look, here's naked dudes painted in rainbow colors riding bikes in front of a bunch of kids. This is a a, a family-friendly event, so-called." Now, I realize that there are nudists in the world. And I realize that nudity in and of itself is not inherently sexual. I mean, it tends to be sexualized by third parties. But in and of itself, simply boobs or a butt or something like that, even a swinging dick, uh, are not sexual. It's the reproductive organs, but it's certainly how, what you're doing with them at the time that makes it sexual. Pissing tends not to be sexual. For example, asses tend to be sexualized, but when you're taking a shit, most people aren't into that, so to speak. But the Krasensteins came out, and they cell phoned massively by ridiculing libs of TikTok for even putting the video out. And the point was the point that they were trying to make. I talked about this the other day. Was mystifyingly stupid. They're like, well, we don't believe that public nudity should be legal or anything, but you sharing this out in front of 30 million kids on Twitter as a platform, because supposedly there are 30 million Twitter users under 18. I'm not 100% sure that that's true, uh, I don't know the exact number, but we'll just play devil's advocate, <laughs> literally, and, uh, and go with it. Okay, so Libs of TikTok is, I guess, showing porn to minors by putting out a piece that says, look, uh, here's the Toronto Pride event, Budweiser's helping to sponsor it, leftists are, are cheering for it, it's supposedly family friendly, but here are dudes that are naked on their bicycle. And the Krasenstein's wild accusation was that Libs of TikTok was sexualizing minors by revealing the fact that this had happened. And, and even going so far as to act moralistic and saying, like Brian Krasenstein, 
uh, was like, uh, I'm not going to show post the whole video because I don't want to uh, show this material to minors. I'm just going to post this still of the, you know, the, the screen cap of what libs of TikTok had posted, basically. I'm like, dude, first let's be pragmatic here. We're on the internet. If a person under 18 wants to find actual pornography, they're going to find it. There is no stopping it, and there never will be. Internet ID system wouldn't work. Uh, it, no matter how much authoritarianism you get in there, you're not going to be able to stop people from seeking that out. Hell, you know, since the 50s or so, people have been reading National Geographic to see naked native titties and things like that. Um, that's going to happen. Posting the video for the purposes of criticizing it and saying, look what Budweiser is sponsoring, is not promoting the material. And the kind of people that follow libs of TikTok or, or other political, like I, I know, I look at my demographic. Most of my audience is in its mid-20s to mid-40s. That's the core demographic that I cater to. Um, these are not, not, not kids. They're also, they don't tend to be exceptionally old individuals. It's roughly people who are young-ish, to middle-aged-ish. That's my core audience. Um, looking at the demographics of most political commentators, libs of TikTok would be one of them, you're not going to find a hell of a lot of people under 18 following it. People under 18 tend to have less of an interest in politics. This is reflected in voting trends, by the way. So the idea that libs of TikTok is trying to show porn to people under 18, that's bullshit. And, and the Krasensteins knew it. They were being disingenuous. They have coped big time since then because they have been astronomically ratioed. I'm going to read you out one of the tweets that Ed Krasenstein made. Again, massively ratioed. Here's what he said as a cope. Let me be clear, neither Brian Krasenstein or I think public nudity should be legal. Of course, if it's an adult-only area, I have no problem with it. Go ahead and whip your wang around. Who cares? We don't think kids should be ex exposed to nude adults. Well, I think that we're in agreement here. With that said, nudity is legal in many red and blue states. Why did you have to point out red and blue states? We're already aware of this. There are clothing optional beaches, I think, in pretty much every state in the Union. Nude gay people on bikes in a state that allows nudity is not illegal. No, it's not. And that was never the point that was being made, Brian, and you know it. Talk about a little bit of a, a deflection, moving the goalposts there. If you are outraged over this, you should be outraged over the lack of laws that allow this. I don't believe in banning public nudity. I simply don't want it at events where kids are reasonably expected to be in attendance. Now, if there was a straight pride parade in Toronto or, in, or anywhere else, no, kids shouldn't be in attendance if they're going to be people that they are, are naked. It's not necessary, even if they're not acting in a sexual manner. It's not, you know, who does it help? What pragmatic role does it actually play? What is helped in society in any meaningful fashion by having that occur? It doesn't matter if it's a pride parade. It seems like pride is effectively trotted out as a facade to cover for people that are acting in an improper manner, like Drag Queen Story Hour. Yeah, it's okay. It's a protected category because I'm basically involved in a minstrel show that, that, uh, that uh, uses femininity as a form of a comedic foil. You should also be outraged over laws in the red states that allow heterosexual people to be naked in public. Again, if there's no kids around, I don't really care. If it's in a person's own personal home, there's not a whole lot the law can do about it. Again, unless they're being like creepy old man or something like that. Is it necessary for this to be happening <clears throat> at a parade where there are children in attendance? No. And that's the problem. And that's what the Krasensteins are avoiding addressing here. Public nudity has been legal in various jurisdictions since the beginning of humanity. Children have been exposed to nudity since the beginning of humanity. Yeah, I mean, originally human beings barely knew how to make clothes, of course. Do I think it's right? No. Why is it that the outrage only ignites when gay people are naked? How do you know that those individuals were of necessity gay, Brian? They could have been bi. Could have been asexual. I mean, it's a pride event. That doesn't mean that a straight person can't go there. And this is another thing that I've talked about. One of the things that you run afoul of when this sort of behavior is permitted or in, in expressly uh, promoted by a government, uh, in the case of Tor Toronto's pride, certainly is, is that somebody can say, hey, you know, that they're a kitty diddler, basically. Well, I'm gay now for the day. I'm going to paint myself up in the pride flag and bike around all these kids with a glowing erection. What's stopping them? Um, there's no law against it. 
There's no litmus test for finding out whether they're actually pride members or whether they're boring heteros like myself. What's to stop them? Absolutely nothing. There is nothing stopping a completely straight man from putting on the pink dress and going into the girls' locker room right now. They're not actually trans, they're not gay, they're completely straight, they want to go in there to see some, some female ass or something like that. There's nothing you can do unless they're acting in an explicitly lewd manner and, and outright sexually assaulting people. Anyone complaining about it tends to be the one that gets in trouble. That's the problem. The problem isn't with someone who genuinely, they have severe dysphoria, they, they're post-op, maybe pre-op, maybe, they're taking hormones and stuff and, and, you know, would be reckoned to be homosexual under other auspices. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that individual other than the dysphoria, of course. Uh, they're not the problem. The problem is people that are gaming the system. And you have no way of knowing whether these individuals were of that particular caliber, Brian. Uh, uh, where was all this outrage during Mardi Gras parades? Where is all the outrage when straight nudist groups bike through cities? No, the nudist group doesn't need to bike through the city in front of kids. If they want to go biking out in the hinterlands at the, the nudist camp or on the nude beach or something, uh, don't really have a problem with that. In fact, I find it very amusing. As far as Mardi Gras goes, the average person doesn't actually flash the crowd at Mardi Gras. A handful of chicks that get loaded with tequila at Mardi Gras flash the crowd. Technically speaking, they may be breaking the law at the time. It's just not particularly actionable. Um, but you're, you're comparing the Pride Parade, you, you do uh, understand, Brian. You're comparing it to an event in which completely trashed college girls flash their boobs at other people in order to get beads. That's what Pride has become about, according to the Krasensteins, I suppose. <clears throat> so, huge cell phone. The Krasensteins, Budweiser's collapsing, and, and Pride is actually hazarded. What, what, you know, 20 years ago was, hey, I'm gay, I want to get married, please leave me alone to live my life, and, and you know, I want to be able to transfer property to the person I'm with. That has been completely transmogrified. The old Pride doesn't even exist anymore. It does not resemble the struggle of the 90s or the 2000s, which was basically about treat us equally and with some degree of dignity and please don't like lynch us and shit like that. That was what it was about. It roughly mimics the transmogrification of the civil rights struggle from, hey, black people should be able to use the same restroom as white people and not have to drink out of the inferior fountain or go to the black only school that fucking sucks and has been transmogrified into Gibbs. It has been transmogrified into reparations incorporated by groups like BLM. Always with a little bit of dovetailing with communism involved, you will notice. This is probably the greatest cell phone that I've ever seen in my life. The Krasins keep getting ratioed. Every time they try to apologize, it's a half apology. You're making, ironically, they're making exactly the same mistake as Budweiser. Well dovetailed in with the same uh, conundrum that Budweiser is, uh, originally had. What a goddamn shit show. That's about all. Peace out.